Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with me, your host. My name is Chad Medved. This is my podcast. Appreciate you being here. Uh, first things first, it is finally fall time. It's October. The weather's chilly out. I got a hoodie on. I'm excited for what we got coming up this next month and a half. And, uh, you know, I hope you're excited too. Usually, Whenever October comes around, I'll call you right back, switches its focus from highlighting, you know, regular, standard, typical, normal businesses to try to find guests that fit the mold of the Halloween season. You know, I tried to talk to, uh, you know, over the years. I've talked to mediums, I've talked to funeral directors, I've talked to morticians, I've talked to all sorts of wild people that kind of fit the spooky vibes. And uh, it's important that, it's important for me to try to utilize the spooky businesses around here during October because, you know, I am a Halloween junkie. I'm a spooky junkie. My wife is the same. Every year in October, we can't wait to go hit all the local haunted houses. We can't wait to go do all the Halloween stuff, go pick out pumpkins, apple cider donuts, you know, the whole deal. But it is, uh, it's finally feeling like that. I took a couple of weeks off, got the studio looking all spooky with all my Halloween decorations. Uh, and, you know, me and my wife already hit a couple of haunted houses. We're just excited about it. This is our time. This is our time. And, you know, I, uh, I'm excited to kick off this group of Halloween episodes with uh, a great friend, one of, a, one of the greatest guests that we've had, and uh, with... I'm excited to kick off this Halloween season with a great guest. His name is Spencer Dillman. I've known him for quite some time now. Uh, I got introduced to him, uh, you know, five years ago, four years ago now during COVID, uh, whenever I was trying to find some guests for that ha that Halloween season, you know, I reached out, I wanted to reach out to the local haunted houses. You know what I mean? I wanted to reach out to the local haunts because that's one of my favorite things about October. And uh, I kind of wanted to learn more about a haunted house and uh, how they make it work. So I reached out to Hundred Acres back then, and they put me in contact with Spencer, who is a you know absolutely ridiculous makeup artist, and uh, he is someone that used to work there as a scare actor full time, but in 2019 kind of took a back seat to scaring full time and took in more responsibility behind the scenes as far as you know production and making sure the makeup team there. Uh, is handled. You know, he does, you know, he does all sorts of shit down there. Uh, and it's, uh, it's pretty interesting to learn about. So I had to have him, you know, it was five years ago, whenever I talked to him almost four years ago, I keep saying five, but it was four years ago. And, uh, I didn't remember anything we talked about and, you know, to boot in 2020, hundred acres didn't even open. So I figured why not have Spencer come back and, uh, you know, just do it all over again. Um, now, this all kind of stemmed from me doing a Halloween shuttle with the Berg bus. You know, I'm sure if you follow the account, you saw me posting about it the whole time. But uh, last week, we took a Berg bus full of people to 100 Acres Manor for a night full of spooky fun that Spencer and his associate Kayla hooked us up with. You know, they really took care of us over at 100 Acres. We got to go in the haunted house. We got to go in the maze. We got to go in the escape room. And, uh, you know, we just kind of got a little... A little uh, little VIP treatment, if you want to say, but, uh, it was just a fun time. You know, me and my wife like going to these haunted houses. So my goal was to create an event that, uh, you know, was just a way to bring more people to it. You know, what's better than going into a haunted house with a group of people that you know? Um, so that's what we did. We uh, sold some tickets to, you know, a night of 100 Acres Manor. Everyone hopped on the Berg bus from the waterfront. And I did, you know, I hosted, you know, a shuttle ride over there. We talked about some history. We, we talked about some spooky stories. We had some, some Halloween candy. And it was just a great time. And then, you know, we had Spencer in here. Uh, and we talked all about the haunted house. We talked all about Hundred Acres Manor, uh, and we talked about everything from you know the the inner workings behind the scenes to you know how everything kind of comes together 
in this quick month and a half time period. You know, if you think about it, all these haunted houses, they prepare all year and then everything just happens real, real quick in a blink of an eye. Uh, 100 Acres is open currently. If you are looking for a haunted house to go to, they are open until the first week of November. Uh, and it's a great one. You know, I can't say enough about it. You're going to go there. You're going to have a fun time. And uh, it's impressive. It's impressive what they got going on over there in South Park. But again, Spencer comes by this week and we talk about everything from, you know, how someone effectively does the makeup for a whole haunted house full of scare actors every day. You know, if you think about it, all the scare actors in there, all these people got makeup on, all these people are done up. And if you think about it, you know, how does this all happen? How does this haunted, how does this haunted house get put together? What goes into a haunted house throughout the year? You know, obviously it's more than just, you know, opening up early September and just running through with a bunch of people. You know, Spencer tells me all about, you know, the training that all the scare actors go through from vocal training to movement training to, you know, he, he told me he had a 23 page book that he gives everyone, which is pretty impressive. But, uh, He's just a great guy. I cannot speak enough about how talented he is with special effects makeup. You know, there's links below that you could click and you could check out his work, but, you know, absolutely stellar. He does incredible work, and uh, he's one of the reasons that, that, that 100 Acres is as cool as it is. And uh, I'm excited to know him. I'm very, very happy to know him. I'm appreciative of him cutting out some of his downtime during this crazy October that he has to come into the studio and tell us more about him and 100 Acres Manor. Now, I will quit talking your ear off. And without further ado, episode 289 of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with Spencer Dillman of 100 Acres Manor. Hello? Um, how was your day today? It's all right. Work. Are you, uh, I mean, you're full time at your studio, right? Yeah. Well, the salon. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess, yeah, salon. Yeah, better yeah. terminology. What's that called? Chariot and Vine. And that's yours now, right? You and someone else? Yeah. And yep. that, when did that open? Um, what fall of 21, we opened at the village at Sola. And then this May, we got the keys to like a brick and mortar. Oh, yeah, yeah. It Where's was in, that at? It's in Bethel, right near uh, like Sheets and KS Kim Karate. I feel like that's like the hell right yeah, near the Tennyson. Yeah, yeah <laughs> the Tennyson. I'm like, wait, which landmark <laughs> in Bethel can I give you? KS Kim Karate. That's so the funny. It's funny because I do know where the KS uh, Kim is, you but I know where the Tennyson is. <laughs> yeah. uh, is that place still? Is it still? A cl- oh, fuck yeah. It's open still. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine the last time I was there. I've I had to been. be. Oh, I was there before. I had to be maybe 20. I definitely was underage, no <laughs> doubt, uh, because I was with older kids. The co- older kids that I hung out with were four years older than me. I don't think any of us might have been of age. We might have been. Who knows? Yeah. It all runs together. The Tenny. What a yeah. funny time. That's My so funny that you brought that actually, up. <laughs> some guy was leaving there a couple of years ago. This was probably more than a couple, but he was leaving and he was hammered. And just peeled out of the parking lot and like T-boned her, wrecked her whole car. It was no like, it way. Was bad, bad. He was like on the wind, like the through the windshield of his car. It was crazy. Oh. And the owner of the Tennyson came out with like no shoes on and was like, "He didn't leave here. No and shoes. They were like, yeah, he did. Where are your <laughs> shoes, sir? Like, I should hit that guy up and uh, try to interview <laughs> yeah. him. <laughs> Can you imagine an episode about the Tennyson? Yeah, uh, that'd wow. be funny as hell. It would be funny. Uh, so, I mean, like full time, you're at the salon. Yeah. And I mean, that's been the main thing you've done for, I mean, how many years now? Almost 10. Yeah. I did the haunt from 2013 to 2015, 2016, and then took a break, went to beauty school, worked at a salon for a couple of years. And then I still would like go to the haunted house and like just fuck around for a little bit. Yeah. And then, uh. After that. I feel like we have to rewind this whole thing because, <laughs> yeah. okay, so, you know, we talked before, for anyone that's listening or watching, uh, I had you on before. Do you remember when that was? 
2020. Yeah, October yeah. 2020. Yep. I looked at it uh, today just to post because I was like, I wonder what year that was. That was a long ass time ago because I was like, I really don't even remember like what we talked about back then. And yeah. uh, I mean, it, you guys weren't even open then, right? No, we didn't open that year. Um, How weird. Yeah, it was it was really weird. It was really weird. But that was like the first time as an adult that I got to like enjoy October. Not yeah. that I don't enjoy it. I absolutely it's enjoy a, what i do yeah but like i don't get to go to haunted houses i know like a pumpkin patch the boo barn at triple b is like the closest i get to like <laughs> i know it's or so, castle blood's uh daytime trick-or-treating i go to that as many times as i can hell yeah. yeah yeah it sucks because i mean like for you being in the industry i mean you're obviously passionate about the industry that's why you're in it so you can't even really get to you know enjoy it on that level right like if if I have like I have friends all over the country that do other haunted houses and yeah. we always talk about like, oh, if you're up in this area, come visit me and I'll come visit you and we'll do this and then all like, of us. I've never October, been busier in my life. Yeah. All of us in October <laughs> are like, all right, I'll see you at a trade show or uh, so that's, that's why like, we do those. We get to open up. That's so sometimes. it's like sad. It's it's sad yeah. to think about that. But it's also, fun, I mean, though. like, it's cool because you're like injecting that concentrated dose of nostalgia and culture. You know, you're yeah. a destination for that. Oh yeah. Uh and that's we cool. Try to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hell yeah, you definitely are. Uh especially now. Now now let's let's uh, I mean you from Pittsburgh? Yeah. Where well, for the most part. Where'd you grow up? So I was born overseas, grew up in Virginia Beach for a little bit. Well, don't just brush over that. Where's overseas? Spain. My I'm a military brat, so my parents were stationed over there and uh, oh, okay. I was born in Rota, which is like the southernmost island of Spain. Wow. Yeah. When did you come over here? I think it was like 4. Yeah, wow. I was really young, so like it's I'm not as exotic. Are your parents sounds. from here? Yeah. My mom's from the Berg. My dad's from Boston. Okay. But my mom, we relocated back here after we moved to Virginia Beach when we came back to the States. Grew up there for a little bit. That's where like a lot of my Halloween stuff kind of started. Because, Virginia Beach. Yeah. There was a uh, boardwalk attraction there called Nightmare Mansion. And oh. it's like a year-round haunted house. And when I was really little, and we would go to the boardwalk when we had people in town. Because my mom was like, we live here. We're not doing this boardwalk stuff like at all. <laughs> we have a boardwalk at home. You can, you can go there. But uh, there was, it's this haunted house and the facade was like a face with two hands. And yeah. And there was like a rocking chair, like kind of like uh, Norman Bates's mom. Yeah. In the window. And I thought that it was like the coolest thing in the world, but I was like hundred percent six. So they were like, yeah, no, you're not going in that. <laughs> you're going to freak out. And then my neighbor one year for Halloween it was in like late August. I walked outside and the entire front of his house was plywood. Oh, wow. And he built like a castle facade on it and did a home haunt. So to trick or treat, you had to walk through his house and he had like one animatronic and like all the dads in the neighborhood were like scaring all the kids and stuff. And I specifically remember one, there was a, they dug a, dug a giant hole in the backyard and put some strobe lights on it. And somebody had a zombie mask on and was like climbing out of the ground. God. But it, like as a six year old, I feel like I almost I like, was like, this is real. I know. I feel like I almost like want to weep that I didn't get to experience <laughs> that. That's like the it cinematic was, yeah. Halloween, uh, childhood. Like, cause all I'm thinking of is immediately is the boardwalk scene from us. Uh, yeah. And like, you know, that type of vibe. Yep. Uh, but man, that's awesome. That's a, that's interesting that you, I didn't know you were a military brat. I mean, oh, were yeah. you moving around a good bit or were you down in Virginia for a while? So my dad did 22 years, but he did like the first 20. What type of military? Navy. What, what was it? What, what did he do? Uh, <laughs> he was on a boat. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like an aircraft carrier. Yeah. He was out, he was, uh, deployed at, like for like six months at a time. Yeah. He was, I think they just called them airmen. If he listens to this, dad, I'm sorry. I don't know yeah, exactly. That's what all right. He, he fought fires for a little bit though. That's he was, like, uh, trained to like, if shit went down on the boat that he was like one of the people that had to respond. So honestly, that's like, uh, I have such like a, a point in my, like my cousin who, uh, very, very close with, she was on an aircraft carrier for a while. And like, we got to go to Norfolk and that's where, I, that, that's okay. Where yeah. She was on the USS Harry S Truman and, okay. and was you know, we had to, we got to go for like a family and they like took us out into the water. They had planes taken off and land in like one of the most incredible memories I've ever had, uh, just experience in that, but that's pretty wild. Were, were your parents into Halloween? My mom was, oh, okay. my, my dad, I mean, he was like, yeah, yeah this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Halloween. Yeah. But he's, his birthday is on devil's night. Oh, uh, so 
he gets like a double whammy in yeah. our family. But my mom was super into Halloween growing up. And she, um, specifically in Virginia Beach, I remember she dressed up as Ghostface. Oh, am I too No, you're good. You're good. I'm just moving that up. Um, she dressed up as Ghostface and pretended to be fake on our porch. And then when kids would come up, she'd jump up and scare people. Iconic. So then when I went semi-pro, my mom was like, damn. Yeah. I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, my parents were into it. My mom and dad were like, my dad, I remember one year we built like a, a guillotine, like a full-size guillotine and made like a, a dummy and uh, always had pumpkins. They always had us in like cool-ass costumes. And the only thing that sucked about where I grew up was we were, on this like incredible hill so it was like kind of it was kind of fucked up trick-or-treating as a kid because like just hoofing it up oh hill. my god i'm telling you do you know where sarah high school is no where's it? it's like in mckeesport if people know okay. where it is it's literally just like big ass hills wherever you go uh and i mean it was cool though we had a lot of people in the neighborhood that like participated so i guess it could be cool like i i took it for granted now because i live in this neighborhood not one trick-or-treater yeah. uh yeah they're literally like nowhere to be found i know it's crazy it was the only time i ever got to pass out candy as an adult yeah and i was like where the hell is everybody? And I lived in Mount Lebanon at the time. So I was like, oh, I live right it's off the Beverly Road. This is going to be great. And we had like a decent handful, but I specifically watched a group of kids. Like now I had a couple friends over from the haunted house. We dressed up as sheet ghosts. We were like playing music, running yeah. around. We had to get it out of our system. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> but they, uh, the kids like walked up the, um, they were like the last group. They walked up the sidewalk, saw us like, having too much fun and clearly we're like I'm not dealing with this yeah and they so. crossed the street and then the brave one came over and it was the end of the night and i had this giant bowl of candy and i was like what do you say and he was like thank you and i was like no idiot trick or yeah treat. Like, what are you doing and he was like oh yeah okay trick or treat and i was like cool dump the bowl yeah just take it all. And he was like, are you serious? Yeah, just enjoy it. And then it. yelled to his friends. And he was like, he said we can have it all. That's so the then best. they came over. I That's was like, the yeah, best. See, I'm not. That's a, uh, I mean, it sucks to hear that like not too many people do it now. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like, I feel like you don't have kids playing in like neighborhoods and shit anymore. Like I don't see kids riding bikes around and stuff. I live in an apartment now, so. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's understandable. Now, whenever you were like growing up, you know, we talked about you owning a salon now and like being, you know, doing hair for a long time. But what is life like growing up? Like, were you, did you think you were going to do that? Um, it was always kind of in the back of my mind. I wanted to do monster makeup. Like I wanted to go to special effects school. How, how young film. whenever you think of this? Oh, I mean, probably as much as I can remember. Like I always knew I wanted to do something in entertainment and yeah. like I was always like in chorus and singing and doing stuff like that. So I was like, I want to be famous. And that, I was clearly like, okay, <laughs> you're 12, sit down. But then as I got more involved in like theater in high school, we did Dracula for one of the fall plays oh. and they had this little special effects box. And I was like, at the end of the show, they were like just packing it away. And I was like, can I have that stuff that we're never going to use? And they were like, yeah, sure. And it was like liquid latex and a bruise wheel and some blood. Yeah. And uh, I just started making like cuts on my hands and our director's wife um, she's, she works in film in Pittsburgh and she saw one of them and she was like, okay, real shit though. You're kind of good at that. Like for not knowing what you're doing, like you're doing a pretty good job. So like, keep, keep practicing that. And this is like, like ninth, 10th grade. Yeah. And the, and like, this is your first endeavor into like, you know, that sort yeah, of like makeup of and like everything. Halloween costume. Yeah. Cause I mean, I was obsessed with that. My mom at like three, oh, you had some crazy movie. ones. Oh yeah. She made me into the wolf man. I like sat still at like three years old and she like glued hair all over my face. Oh my God. And like, yeah. Scenes were, I mean, yeah, to we the were nines. into it. Yeah. Well, what like, so, I mean, you being in ninth grade and like starting to do this stuff, I mean, where are you getting, how old are you? 32. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, like, so similar age. <laughs> I mean, like, where are you getting your like inspiration on how to use in this stuff? Because back then YouTube wasn't around as much as it is now. Yeah. It was, YouTube was like just starting. I feel like, cause this would have been like Oh eight. Yeah. Oh uh, seven, Oh eight, like that year. Um, 
And with YouTube just starting, I just kind of was like going off of like whatever my brain told me it looked like. So if I, I clearly had seen like a cut. Yeah. So I was like, Oh, I know that there needs to be like skin separated and then darker in the middle and then some blood. Wow. And so just kind of like trial and error. And I mean, it wasn't good. Yeah. 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 Like, it did not look good at all. But that's cool. In to comparison like- to like what I know now about special effects and stuff like that, like it's it's definitely something cool to look back on and be like, wow, I actually, I feel a little bit more like connected to that craft just because of being self-taught and having to like do like shitty makeup for so long. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's cool. Uh, My brother, I was lucky to have like a brother six years older than me. So he was, you know, he would like kind of inject all the cool shit into my life. And, uh, he was real big into zombies. And I remember like him doing zombie makeup and him him doing my zombie makeup. But, yeah, like from a young age, like we McKeesport used to have a Halloween parade that was like popping. It was a huge deal right in downtown McKeesport that's just like dilapidated now. Like you would can't even imagine it was the same place. And uh I mean like we always were like getting crazy doing shit. But I remember like my brother doing latex and like making cuts and like, you know, drying it and ripping it and all that stuff from like super young age. And now that I think about it, I'm like, it's wild that he was doing that whenever he was like, you know, probably like 14, 15. And it's cool to think about all that stuff. Oh yeah. Now high school, I mean like, and you, with you starting to like realize that like, you know, being famous isn't just like, (laughs) I'm going to just be famous. Yeah, You can't just like, just wake up and be like, all right, I'm famous now. (laughs) Like what, like what is your idea that you're going to do after school? So that was when I really wanted to get into like monster makeup and like, didn't really, I didn't, I had the maturity level of like a fifth grader by the time I graduated high school. So I was like, uh, yeah, I'm going to do monster stuff and then go to this school or go to that school or blah, blah. And I just, I knew I needed to take time to like really figure out exactly how that career path was going to work out. And then that was when I found the haunted house. Now I had volunteered there cause I went to South park. So it was 10 minutes from our, our house. Yeah. I'd volunteered there in high school and knew about it, but, um, just didn't know how to get involved. Like as an adult, other yeah. than just show up at five, wear all black and then they'll put you in a spot. And I knew I wanted to do makeup, but I didn't know how that place had operated by that point. Yeah. And um, this was probably a year after I graduated from high school. And uh, one of my friends who I was in drama club with, he was working there at the time. And that was the first year that they were bringing in like staff actors. Yeah. And they were hiring makeup artists and we were, they were going to start like investing more into like the, the cast portion of the show. And, um, that was, and I told him, I was like, oh yeah, like I'm looking to get involved in a haunted house. And he was like, well, come with me. And that's once I found the haunted house, I kind of put like pump the brakes on like going to school for special effects. So I could leave time for the haunted house. Cause you had to be there every day at that yeah. point. Um, so I pumped the brakes on that and then just like slowly started picking up more and more and more at the haunt, at the haunt. And just like, anytime you could be more active, you yeah. participated. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because it's it's wild to think about it because i remember whenever i was in high school i volunteered there as well and i remember that was like a big thing to do like interact hours yeah but uh it was interesting because i remember now the makeup situation like i remember volunteering there i rolled up with a mask and they were like no 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 no. just (laughs) stand in a line i'm ready yeah yeah i had a i had like this i remember this mask it was so wild it was this like this like crazy monk mask where it like was this like troll looking thing and he had like a bald spot up top and i had this monk robe and i was like let's fucking go like i got the whole thing i got the rope and everything like, I'm gonna be scary i had shit. a rosary and shit and i was like walking even though a monk and a rosary it was fucking just whatever i was just adding whatever but i pulled up there and they were like no 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 just put on this apron, stand in a line, and they just had some airbrushing. The gray face. It was like yeah. it was like a it was like a rust color, and they put me in a butcher shop, and I had this this crowbar, and I was just whacking it off the ground <laughs> the whole night. I remember that was my whole that was my volunteering at Hundred yeah. Acres. And now we don't give any children any type of hand prop. Yeah, I mean it was wild. They it was like shit out of that place. <laughs> this was definitely a full real crowbar, and I was just whacking it off shit in yeah. there. And uh, yeah. It was, I mean, you know, you had to make it work back oh, in yeah. the day. Now, now before before you got involved with the haunt, like, were you aware of different avenues for makeup school? Like, um, did you Tom know about Savini, Douglas? Yeah, like I had I had researched a little bit of the Savini school. I actually toured the school and did like the entrance exam, did all of that stuff, and then uh, 
because their fall semester starts at the end of September. And I had already been like a month into the haunted house season and I was yeah. like, nah, I'm going to wait. Um, but there was that one. And then there was a um, school in Orlando called Joe Blasco's makeup Academy. I think it's vamp now. Joe Bla- I've never heard of that one. Is there an, any more in Pittsburgh that are there special was effects art, ones? There was art Institute until that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, anyone, anyone who ever comes on here is always like, yeah, I went to the art Institute and like, I'm telling you, I've probably had 30 people that have been there. Every one of them are like fucking suck there. <laughs> <laughs> every one I of never, them. I never went to school for like at the art Institute or anything, but everybody that I ever meet is the same conversation. hundred percent. It was like, uh, it was like, I'm like, Ooh, yeah, yeah. You, you have that like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's funny. I, I didn't know that they did like a, so they had a special effects program there. Yeah. They called it like entertainment design or something, but it was, it was special effects driven. Yeah. Um, to my knowledge, I could be. Huh. Interesting. And I mean, like at that time, whenever you're like in that mindset, Douglas was like the big name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, Cause I knew kids from high school that went there too, but like, I don't remember if we had like, you know how you had the people that come in and like, kind of like do a PowerPoint and everything. I don't remember if we had that in school. Like yeah. I'm, I graduated in 08 and I feel like we were right on like the tail end of like not being shepherd towards like trades. Right. You know, like they That's were like, everybody was like, yeah, what college are you going? Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Uh, interesting. Now you working in the haunt, you said you worked there a couple years first to like get your footing. Yeah. I started there in 2012. Um, actor and makeup artist. They actually didn't hire me as a makeup artist the first year. Did you try for it? Um, I, yeah, I put in an application. Um, I had to email the makeup director at the time, some referenced photos of my work and, and you were still like like actively like, like doing stuff outside just to yourself. Yeah. Like makeup. Okay. Yeah. And so it was all like self-applied stuff. And I like did a look in my bedroom at like midnight, like, Oh, okay. I gotta make myself look like a zombie. (laughs) And I made these like shitty latex teeth and like glued them in. I have a picture of it. I'll, I'll send it to you. But, um, I sent it to her and she was like, how long did that take you? And I was like, this took me like 45 minutes. I was quick as hell. And she was like, oh. yeah, that's all it. right. Well, we'll call you. <laughs> so they actually, they didn't hire me to do makeup the first year. And then once I got hired as an actor, I was talking to um, our old operations manager and I said something about like, yeah, I didn't, didn't hear anything back. And he was like, don't worry, you can do makeup. It's fine. And I was like, oh, okay. So I like rolled in the first day, jumped on a station and started doing makeup. And they were like, oh Yeah we weren't going to call you. And I was like, it's okay. Yeah. I'm here now. So you just like got thrown into it and yeah. been there ever since. Yeah. That's cool. That's uh, I mean, that's like a, a good origin story on <laughs> right. how it, how it kind of <laughs> panned out. Now at that point in time, like, I mean, what, what's your skill level? Is it like decent? Barely any, like if, like I look back now at a lot of those photos and I'm like, who the hell let me wear that out of that trailer? Well, well, just from like the bone structure and like how things were applied and like, there's a wrong way you can over blend stuff really fast, especially with the products that we were using at the time. So it can look like way not what we do now. Well, well let me ask you this. So like as the, as a mindset of a, of like a very like busy haunted house and like the, goes through a lot of people every night that has, you know, didn't you say you had 80 some scare actors yeah. around there? I mean, how, what's the mechanics on the mentality on how to do makeup for 80 some people efficiently in that time? So how we um, structure it now, I have a team of 10 artists every single night. Um, there's more than 10. Some of them float in, some of them like our backup artists just in case, but we have two teams are, we do four different levels of makeup now. So level one, two, three, and four, and that goes off of how much detail that spot's going to get. So a lot, some of the spots, if it's a very dimly lit scene, the spot's only meant to be seen for two seconds because it's a pop scare. Gray face. Yeah, right. They'll yeah. Get like, <laughs> they get like the bare bones makeup, um, but it still has to be applied correctly because we don't want it. You, you need contrast at that point. You don't need a lot of detail. So you need to make sure that like the focal points, like the eyes, the temples, the cheeks, and the mouth are all done properly. So that way when that pops out, it's your brain will register like, Oh, that's a, a scary face that's coming at me. That's not just like some. Teenager. Uh, yeah. And then it, it goes up from there to where it's like, okay, this person's just going to get the contour. This person's going to get base and contour. Cause they're a little bit more well lit. And then by the time you get to like the spots that are like highly interactive in your face, Q line, um, front of house stuff. Yeah. Like, ones, like the lady who's like ushering you in, in the beginning. Yeah. 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 
Like she obviously has like, you know, some prosthetic stuff, on. everything yeah. on. But uh, that's interesting to think about that because like, so what time do you start doing makeup? 515 is the earliest that people will be called. Um, and usually they'll enter the trailer around like 520, 530 ish, depending on like how long it takes to organize them and get everybody going where they're going. So we have anywhere from 515 to about seven is when we'll like be like wrapping up the last person. And then we go right to an actor meeting, actor meeting, warm up, and then places. What does an actor meeting consist of? So it's usually just me like hyping them up as best as I can. Um, Let's fucking go. Literally, literally, literally. (laughs) Um, But so I give them some notes from the previous night if there are any. Yeah. Usually at this point in the season, it's me just coming in and being like, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing good. Yeah. And I just kind of give them a little bit of a pep talk. Give them some. Are people in the same spot? I try to move people around as much as I can and as little as I can, depending on each actor. Cause like with that many people, you're dealing with so many different personalities. Some people will come in and they're like, I need to do the same thing every night in order to be consistent. It's the spot that I know it's the scare that I know I'm good at this one. Let me keep doing this. And then other people are like, I'm bored. I need to shuffle around. Yeah. So depending in size of staff. So like we don't have, like I'll have 80 actors one night, 70 the next and, 90 the next and so depending on how large the cast is certain spots need to be filled Hmm. first and then i go through like a secondary list of spots and that way everything's evenly placed Uh. so that way when you walk through a lot of times like our biggest thing that i read is people will be like there were no actors there are actors they're just placed in certain spots so that way you get an even amount of energy throughout the entire house and i don't cram them into one section and then it's like 25 50 feet of nothing yeah and then another cram of actors and then so we try and space them out so that way you get huh like uh, constant energy the entire time you're walking through it's probably it's probably uh so so i mean let's rewind a little bit before haunt season starts okay so you know you said you started uh and you worked there for a few years you obviously oh, yeah. worked your way up and you know throughout that what does like the beginning of haunt season start? Like when does that start and how do you guys like develop a story and know which route to take? So usually like when, once we close in November, we'll winterize everything. Everybody kind of like takes that time to let the dust settle. Do you rip everything? Does everything get pretty much down? Yeah, every, we're very fortunate that everything gets to stay where it's at weather permitting. So like sometimes we'll come in after the winter and be like, Ooh, we gotta, we gotta fix this. Or, yeah. Um, Oh, that's nice though. You can yeah. kind of like leave it up and yeah, yeah so that's good. We're, we're very fortunate with that. Cause some shows they don't get to do that. They have to take everything down. We don't, we like move props inside, cover things up and yeah. like the giant things that we can't obviously move. But, um, usually like this year it started in January. We started having like the pre production conversations of like, okay, what are we doing? How are we doing this? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? And then, we do a trade show in March is usually when it's at, but it's been like bouncing around. Um, and we go there and that's kind of like a kickoff for all the haunted houses. We go there. It's just a big, we, big deal. Huge trade show. Okay. So that, this is like the main one. It's called trans world. It's in St. Louis, which St. Louis is wild. I, I love that city. I know me and Antoinette want to go for Halloween one year. It's fun. I know. It's that's fun. They've got a says. couple haunted houses out there. A um, couple good ones too. But uh, so that trade show will kick off everything. That's where we like buy the majority of the props that you see. I'll take seminars and just learn from different industry leaders, like how they do things. And that's where a lot of like my actor stuff has come from. It's like things that I've learned from them and been like, okay, how can I implement this into my show? Um, But then after that, we'll come back, start taking some stuff down. So usually around like April, May is when we really start like putting all the stuff into place and hitting the pavement Actors will start in early June. We do a returning actor rehearsal where they all have to come back. And I give this year, it was a 23 page workbook that I like slammed down. And I was Holy like, all shit. Right, learn this stuff. And it, it just kind of details everything on how to be like an effective interactive actor. Yeah. Because acting is like, it's such a broad skill set. And there's so many different versions of acting, like acting for film versus stage are two totally different things. But acting for a haunted house is something that is like wildly different. Yeah. That a lot of people, if I get people that come with like a stage background, I'm like, awesome, cool. You know what it, you, I don't have to worry about your confidence. You know how to perform. Now I need to teach you how to perform in, in such an exaggerated way. And 
it's also a very physical job. So we have to condition throughout the entire summer to get them ready to be like, okay, like, like everybody makes the jokes. They're like, all right, they're going to start doing jumping jacks now. And I'm like, no, it's not like that, but they do need to run back and forth as a zombie so that I know that like for the next six hours in November or in October, they're going to be able to do it, do this for the entire night without like falling out. Yeah. And it still happens. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I bet. Yeah. I bet. I busted my ass on Saturday. I was in costume, fell right down a damn hill. I was like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) That's all right. That's uh, I feel like I, uh, I appreciate that as a, uh, as a worker. I'm like, they're putting in their fucking I deserve it though. I just run my mouth when I'm in costume. Like that's my whole thing is I get to just like talk back and kind of talk a little shit with people. Are you like now, whenever you get in costume, are you like all the way? Oh yeah. 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 I try and disguise myself as much as possible because if I piss somebody off, like I want to make sure that I can like take the costume off, walk out front yeah, and not be recognized. Um, but also I think it helps. Like if you're going to a haunted house, this is what I try and tell a lot of our cast members and you, you know, somebody that works there. If you came and you saw me in costume one night, the only way that you would really know that it's me is if you were paying attention yeah, and you knew like my mannerisms and I try and change those as much as I can. Um, but if you can recognize me and I look like myself, it's going to immediately pull you out of it. I'm not even telling you this. Any photo that you've posted of yourself in makeup, I honestly can't even tell it's you. That's it, the point. I yeah. know. It's, <laughs> I love it's, that. <laughs> it's really so crazy. Like, uh, I was showing people on the bus. So, uh, a little preference for people that are listening. We did the uh, Berg bus trip to 100 Acres. Uh, Spencer and Kayla hooked it up, and we had a wonderful time there. And on the way there, you know, I did the I did the whole history, spooky stories, everything like that. But I was pulling up your photos to show the people that uh, were on the bus because there was there was a, a great uh, divide of people that I knew on the bus, and then there was just a handful of people that were from Cleveland. Uh, so two of them lived here. Which is so cool. Yeah, two of two so of them cool. just moved here a year ago, and then like their two friends drove from Cleveland just to come on the bus that night. Uh, never been to Hundred Acres, but I'm like, you know, the dude that we're talking to is like legit and i'm pulling up these pictures and they're like jesus like and your stuff is so interesting to look at because it's like i don't know i feel like i feel like you know the skin that you do i don't know i can't even describe it me and antoinette will look at it and i'll be like you know like this is fucking crazy because like i don't know you're good at it thank you absolutely good at it i try and make things look rotted and filthy and yeah disgusting because i think like when what's it's hard to scare people nowadays it's really hard to scare people because this is a break for them and they want to experience anxiety safely yeah at a public event so there's a there's a line there that you have to follow so if things can be visually realistic but still whimsical i think that that's what I want things to look like to be the most effective to where it's like so exaggerated, but real at the same time to where you're like, okay, obviously you walk into a room where somebody has been killed. There's blood on the ceiling, on the walls, on this, on that Yeah, haunted house. Like we're doing that. But then we're like, like we have a room, the serial killer room where we threw like fake brain matter all over the place. (laughs) And I was like, there's no rhyme or reason to how this is laying up there, but I don't want it to like, when I talked to our designer, Tyler, we always talk about how like we don't want it to feel minimal when you walk in. We want it to be like an, a sensory overload. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I do with the makeup. 100%. When I do it is I want that when you're, I want you to be confused by it. I want you to look at it and be like, this is inhuman, but it's a person. And I'm, I know what I'm looking at, but I'm confused by it because it's a distraction. Yeah. That way when that person starts acting that performer brings a character to life, you're immediately knocked mm, off your rocker. That's so interesting because I feel like what I was trying to explain is exactly what you just said, but you did it in such a better way because, you know, there's a way that like, you know, if I was doing, you know, a zombie makeup or like my brother, you know, he would put a gash with some blood and like maybe overdo it with some blood. But like yours is the detail that's so fascinating about it. Like the skin detail, the color, the veins, all that. And what you just said is a perfect you know, description on why it's like that. Like I, I go back to the, the eighties trick on your page with like the purple oh, shirt yeah. and the fanny pack, like honestly, one of the most incredible things. Thank you. And, uh, it's like you said, it's so, there's so much detail to it that it's like your eyes have to keep looking around. It's like, and the same thing with the haunt it's sensory overload. And whenever I walk through, I find myself like, you know, looking at everything and it doesn't, it gives me no chance to, 
uh, look ahead and like prepare for what's coming up because I'm like trying to catch what's what's all going on. You don't want to miss something yeah, too. People yeah. get FOMO when they're walking through something yeah. this detailed because, and that's we definitely capitalize on that. So if you're listening, like, sorry about it, we punked you, but <laughs> they will walk through and we want to give them an opportunity to like like let their ADHD like just run. Yeah. And they like turn their head and they look in the wrong direction for like a split second. And that's the sweet spot. And that's when like, next thing you know, somebody's trying to fly out at you method to the madness. Yeah. And it uh, starts with the visual representation of the character. Like I, th- I think of it like that of if you, if you're walking into a set, like obviously there's paint on the walls, there's props, there's blood, there's guts, there's gore, there's all these things. But what's the actor supposed to be like when they're coming out of there? They have to match the room that they're in yeah. in a way they have to live in that same world. Yeah. So that makes sense. We yeah. want it to feel a little bit more graphic. Yeah, you don't um, want it to be just like a random like like uh, like that eighties trick in like the butcher place or yeah, something like that. Yeah. The uh, I mean, like not not even any spoilers, but the house scene in the haunt this year is like so cool with like all the extra props and everything. But that was like a perfect moment of sensory overload where I was like, it was like too much, and I like scared the sh- guy got the shit scared out of me because like yeah. I'm looking around <laughs> and like you just can't prepare for it, can't prepare for it. But now to rewind a little bit more about preparing to like open the haunt, how do you, how do you all develop like, you know, the story as far as like, like how many locations do you have now? So we have five different stories that are being told. Okay. Um, and when has it always been that many? Um, yeah, as far as I know, like the maze used to be in the house. So that was like one of the five sections. Okay. But then it just created such a cluster. Yeah. yeah. After the maze, like people would like back up in the maze and then it would be like a solid, like 250 people deep that Mm. were just like walking through the exit of the house. Now we have to do that on Saturdays. Like, unfortunately, I mean, we we're so busy that people just bunch up on their own. For sure. Um, but the stories that we pick, we're, we, we look at things that are happening in pop culture. We look at things that are happening within horror. A couple of years ago, sci-fi started to come back. So like you had the alien reboot that was happening. Um, Stranger, Stranger things. things. Yeah, that was that. I mean, that's still super popular. I love Stranger Things so much. When is it even coming out again? I saw, Next year, I think. I saw a picture of the main They dude. got hit with a strike though. So. What, what was the main kid's name? Uh, Will, Will Byers? Yeah. I saw a picture of him whenever it started to now, and oh. he looks like this Calvin Klein model with this like pinstripe mustache. I'm like, that is a full grown man now. Yeah, they were all like nine when <laughs> they know. started, and now they're like. It just popped well, up on Reddit the other day. Eleven so, got married recently. <laughs> I, I saw that too, yeah, and, and uh, Papa Papa officiated, officiated it. Yeah, that was sick looking. Yeah, I mean it's wild to think about that. They were all like little babies, and now they're just like humans. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean they were humans, but they're adults now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess like that was a resurgence, like all the sci fi stuff. So you. Inter- I mean, you're conscious of that. Yeah, we, we try and pay attention to kind of what's happening. But we also want to do shit that's cool for us, too. Yeah. Like, I don't want, like, if I'm doing a character at the Haunted House, and I don't, I work out front usually when I'm acting. So, like, there is no story being told out there. So, I kind of have to create my own atmosphere for yeah. myself. And if I'm creating something new, I look at, like, what I think is scary and then I troubleshoot it. So like the first time I do that character, it's not going to be how it looks like in the end because I got to walk out there and, and see what people's reactions to it are. And you can kind of like, I kind of like study, I guess. Yeah. And you fine tune yeah. it along the way. Are you the same? Do you dress up as the same thing now? Now I do because is it the weird, like creepy old lady kind of, Oh no, I don't do that. No, no, that um, I thought that that was one. What didn't, what did you dress up before? Wasn't it like a, so there was this character that I started with Mick Wiggins. Anybody from the haunted house that's listening, just rolled their eyes. They love it, but <laughs> maybe it wasn't even supposed to be an old lady, but no. maybe it was, it was have long hair. Like, yeah, longer. I had like, I had like four foot long dread. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. okay. So that's what I'm talking yeah, it about. It was crazy. Was and, that a long time ago? Yeah, that was, I probably, I think I stopped doing that one. Um, in like 2017 I never got to see you in character. It was stupid. Like it was fun, <laughs> but I literally, I had no idea what I was doing out there my first year. And I was building the elevators my first year with our old designer and missed the spot placement day. So, um, our old actor manager, Giuseppe, what's up? He, uh, 
didn't place me into the house. So that night they put me in like a random hallway. <laughs> they were just like, yeah, just go here for tonight. It's opening night. We're, we're running around crazy. And somebody came up and was like, why are you in here? And I was like, I don't know. They told me to be here and I got, <laughs> I'm like scared. I'm going to get yelled at. And they were like, just go out front. And I was like, okay, that's all the permission that I needed. And I just wandered out front in like half of a costume got to mingle with some makeup there. on and just started tearing shit up. And they were like, stay out here. And so that character kind of evolved, like the more that I did it. Um, and then by the time that I finished it, I was, I really wanted to look like an urban legend, mm -hmm. like something I grew up in South park, like in the sticks of South park, closer to like Finleyville, Elizabeth side. Yeah. So I was afraid of the woods yeah. as a kid. I 100%. mean, running around them and then it gets a little dark and you're like, no, nope, never mind. Yeah. Going inside. So I wanted to kind of emulate like what that entity was in my head, like what weird shit I thought I would see in the woods. Yeah. And then um, some Silent Hill stuff kind of like buried into it. McWiggins. Yeah. And it was named after Sally Wiggins on accident. <laughs> they were like, shout out to yeah, Sally. I I was there. That's the best. They, uh, they were like, what's your character's name? And I said something and they were like, what if it was like something Wiggins, like, you know, like Sally Wiggins, like Pittsburgh. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So <laughs> like Wiggins now so that's my lineage. Well, what do you dress up as now? So now I do this fuck ass clown named frolic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now yeah. that you say that, I remember seeing the pictures. And now. It's a Beetlejuice suit from spirit Halloween. <laughs> Uh, that I bought on the way to the haunt a couple of years ago. This is before I was a manager and was like, you have to do things with integrity. And like, that's what I preach now. And then I go and like put my like party city costume on yeah. and like run out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I bought that for our lights out event that we oh, do. Okay. Cause we themed it as the entire show turns black and white. So we like desaturate it because the lights are out. So obviously you can't see shit anyway, but all the makeup goes to black and white. And it's kind of like what happens when you know in halloween town the yeah. first one or is it the first one yeah the first one when calabar is like sucking the life out of everybody from halloween town yeah, and, and they, they become turn, like, like yeah, yeah yeah that's kind of like what our uh, idea is behind it of like you're not supposed to see a haunted house after halloween so yeah like what happens while this is resting and yeah we, it's like ghosts like like yeah like a ghosty type feel yeah so we treat it as like a uh the manor is an entity and it rests while you guys are celebrating Christmas. We're still just stewing over here and all the, the actors and all the creatures and all the things that you see are actually like residing here, but they start to like lose a little bit. That's cool. As they go. So with the black and white thing, I was like, Oh, I'm going to do a black and white clown. Cause like I always thought clowns were stupid. I still do. I think you're not a juggler. No, no. <laughs> just kidding. I fuck with a couple of their songs, but yeah. um, I'll never, never go to the gathering. But um, I was like, clowns are stupid. They're cheap scares. Like there's, you can do so much more and such in such a creative way to scare people. And then I was like, all right, but what if I did try and clown around one night and <laughs> clown around? One yeah, night. I was like, it'll be fun. And then it was, it turned into very like him from the Powerpuff Girls. Like the voice that I chose at first and the act that I was doing was very like just like soft and unsettling. Yeah. And it was like this like punk clown. And I had this like vest with a bunch of shit on it, but everything was black and white. And then the wig was red. I kept doing that character like on and off and then slowly started getting a little bit more mouthier. And I got more confident in like the comedy that I can do out front and yeah. like, just becoming like, that character. Yeah. And it's, it's more just like me, my personality having costume muscles. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I like, I get a little bit more bold, but that's kind of what my home base character has been out there. If I get in costume now, is that a common thing? You know, do that, do the actors that are in the haunts, do most of them have costume muscles? Cause oh, yeah. I would assume, and I mean, forgive me if this is a stereotype, but I would assume most of the people in there are like, you know, theater kids, like performing. Like I made that joke like the other that. night, you know, I was but, like, you're going to come in here and make fun of theater kids. Like life didn't do that to us already. <laughs> Like, but it's like, they're all the ones that are like scaring the shit out of everyone. Right. They're good at it. Yep. Great at it. Yep. And it's like, that's the best. They're not afraid to be weird. Yeah. And like, I love that. I, uh, I loved that's uh, like, that's one of my biggest regrets was in high school. Never did any theater I was friends with everyone, but like just, I played football forever yeah. and, and I, it just didn't coincide. I tried it. It did not work. It sucked. My I basketball I, team said, we don't need you. <laughs> did you go to uh, South park high school? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just like football yeah either way but having those to like dress up as something and be able to like just get into character you know it's definitely different like it gives you a different type of confidence i think i mean it's like every day everybody dresses up like 
what RuPaul say, you're born naked, the rest is drag, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> but they, when you put a costume on, you're like, that's why I completely disguise myself because I can do things and say things without being worried that somebody thinks that I'm being weird. Yeah. They're just like, that's being weird. That's the character. That person, hmm. I don't know who it is, is being weird. And I'm like, yeah, sure I am. I like that. And I'll never see you again on this earth. So I don't <laughs> yeah. have to worry about what you thought. Yeah. I like that. I, uh, yeah, I like that. So, I mean, like you guys, you know, getting the story, like kind of figured out and working in like the pop culture and like the yeah. things that are like, you know, happening now, you know, how do you like go about utilizing the previous set and still being able to freshen it up to make it feel like it's new? So we have to kind of play with what the building that we're in gave us. So we're, we're in the park. Um, one of the buildings is like an actual structure that you walk through and it's a, we call it the pump house and it's where the tanks were housed for what it previously was. And it's an industrial space. So like we can't put things there that aren't industrial like, so it's kind of always revolved from like a hospital hmm. to we did the torture tank one year, um, which was kind of like hostel themed ish, but it was like supposed to be this like place where you can go and like serial killers can go and like have a room to themselves and live out this murderous fantasy. So like if somebody wanted to, we had like a, the birthday clown killer, the dog killer, there are all these different themes, a magician. That was cool. <laughs> he cut somebody in half of the chainsaw, but um, it, it's always kind of limited us in that building to only do industrial type shows. And that's yeah. where like the aliens place was when breach was there. And now it's back to being a hospital. We brought back like our old theme but the other ones, like we have the baby uh, waiting pool, we call it the pond, um, and that's where voodoo is because we can turn it into a swamp mm. and keep it like and have an actual water f feature. Yeah. Um, but the other ones we're not super limited on, but we feel like we always have to have some type of house. Yeah. In our show because it's hundred acres manor, we need a manor. Yeah. Um, so we always try and keep something like that there. That makes sense. Are you are you familiar with like the history of the grounds that you guys are on? I am. Like with like Sully's pool and everything. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because uh, whenever I did the tour uh, or the bus up there, you know, I wanted to like look at it, but I had no idea that that was like you know what South Park used to like kind of hold there. Yeah. Uh, for people who listen, and it was like uh, there was like three big ass pools. One of them was like uh, bigger than a football field. One of them was like 150 feet that ranged from you know four to ten foot deep. The one that was a football field size, I think it was like three foot deep. But then they had like a couple other waiting pools. But I had no idea. Did you ever see pictures of those? Yeah, we have. We've had a lot of people come down um, that like grew up going there or like had family members that went there. And yeah. Cause it ended in the late seventies. So there's definitely yeah. people still alive. Yeah. And they, uh, they'll come down and they'll have pictures. And then like, I've Googled p pictures myself to just kind of be like, that's like so crazy to see. Like there's a picture of, a, uh, there was a singer, I think that went to the pool once to do something. And there's a picture of her with a couple of guests and she's standing outside of like where, our porta potties are for our actors. <laughs> and I just like think that that's fucking crazy to see like the history of the space and yeah, it's know, neat kind of what it, what it's turned into and what it is now. And like, there's still parts of that place, like of the pool that are, I don't want to say accessible. Um, but there's stone bleachers. If you're listening, don't break in. Um, there's stone bleachers that are along the perimeter of the building on the one side that when you walk through, you can't see them. And if you're up, if you're just like walking through the park, you can't see them either. Because and those are from back then. Yeah. That's cool. I, didn't, I yeah. had no idea about I that. I didn't know they were there for a couple of years and somebody was like, we should be using these bleachers. And I was like, what? Huh? And then they took me back there and I was like, Oh my God, this is actually really cool. They're yeah. like concrete. That is, it's yeah. neat. Uh, that's uh so, I mean, do you have any, like why was, that grounds like why was that area like picked for a haunted house like why was phantoms in the park there in the beginning that i'm not sure yeah like do you like like it's not the same people that run that right no phantoms was ran by i mean there's a couple people that are with us that were at phantoms but they were they weren't involved in the same way that they are now yeah um but they they picked that one i think it was just out of like where just like, location yeah, i mean location. that was back in what the early 90s yeah i think started. i think phantoms in the park was from 91 until 2003 yeah 
and then we started 2004 yeah that's pretty wild because when phantoms closed there were a bunch of people that like had volunteered there that still wanted to operate it so they had to like change everything about it and that's when 100 acres was born do you remember phantoms in the park oh yeah yeah i used to beg my mom to take me there when i when we first moved back to pittsburgh um and then i would cry in line the yeah. entire time me too i got that was where i got the first train saw scare ruined it for yep. me uh was phantoms in the park but uh yeah it's cool that that i mean so so the owners of 100 acres like how does that happen how who takes it over well so we're a 501c3 so we have a board okay. so we're a nonprofit. um and so our board is ran by a couple different people and they, they kind of operate it all year round. Um, and then our like production team just kind of comes in. Were they haunt people? Um, yeah, they were, yeah. I mean, they're interested in haunted Tyler's one of them. He's, I mean, he's super interested in haunted houses and then yeah. there's other people that are like, this is such a, a great way to use entertainment in order to raise money for the community. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now for you guys to, you know, keep this like, you know, updated every year and like move through all this stuff. I thought one of the like the coolest parts about uh, the house this year was like the escape room. You know, obviously uh, it's like separate from the house, but like I like that you guys like add in different things to like you know the grounds. Like, uh, wh what do you call like the midway now? Is it Carver Brothers Midway? Carver yeah. Brother Midway. Yeah. Carver's Brother Midway. Uh, I couldn't think of it. I, I looked it up earlier and I was like, I got to remember what this is called. <laughs> but, I, you know, I like that because it feels like, you know, uh, it's not just the haunt and then you're gone. Right. And that's what it used to be out there. And we realized that, pe like, people are going to make a night out of going to a haunted house anyway. If you and your friends are going to get together and be like, oh, let's go to a haunted house tonight, the first thing you're going to do is be like, what bar are we meeting at before we go there? So we said, okay, let's bring in a local brewery and have that be part of your experience. You're going to go do that anyway. So why not come here first? Yeah. Just spend your whole night with us. And then it just kind of expanded and to having different things for people to do because I mean, it is a huge property and we, it's a huge event and the lines get really long in order for us to like, not keep, not make the show like just one solid line going all the way through. So we want to have more shit for people to do like, okay, instead of going over to the main house first, let's do the maze. Let's play some games. Let's grab a beer. Let's yeah. go do the escape room and just kind of like kill some time and let that line kind of kill itself for a little bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's uh that's just like a reality for any haunt goer. Like as someone who goes to different haunts, you, you know, you anticipate that uh, on a Friday or Saturday, it's obviously going to be busy. Oh, You're yeah. going to be waiting in line. Uh, so it's cool to like add in those different things that you could like, you know, go and like kill some time with, like you said. Now, last year you did the, the buried alive thing this year, there's uh, the escape room and then the maze, but like, you know, what is like the mindset of like adding in these like little extras? that are you know separate from the house so we had a um haunted house production company they like build sets and stuff like that and we had them come in and help us out with part of our show this year and that was something that they brought up about they do five minute escape room kits and so we were like oh let's do it this will be fun and so that was something that they were they we had them bring that in they put it all together and you know we had like our like creative stuff that we wanted to influence it with. But yeah. It was such a nice way for people to be able to come in and do something additional that doesn't kill their entire evening. Yeah. Cause like going to an escape room, if you're going in for an hour, that's show, like a whole night. Yeah. And for you to come to the haunted house, we used to have two full hour long escape rooms that you could do. When was that? This was, it was the Enigma project and it was probably from, Mm, 2016 to 2019 i think we killed him in 2020 okay um or well when we reopened in 2021 we were like we're not doing these anymore but um for you to come to the haunted house and do an hour-long escape room like the schedule was crazy because that's a time ticket yeah and our house isn't mm, so if you good point if you were in line and you oh we're gonna miss our time yeah, you like, can't really anticipate like that a whole thing um, so the five minute one, it makes it a lot easier because it's something that you can cue for people and we can still huh. keep it fun for everybody. Yeah. People wait in line. They know that like, you know, yeah. you're waiting for five minutes, go back in now. I mean, like these trade shows, is that like a part of the trade show? Like they have like different, you yeah. know, things like that, that yep. you could incorporate. 
Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's like there was one booth this year that had this like dark ride simulator thing where you sit in this buggy, and then you put like your VR goggles on, wow. and it does like a whole like. There's different shows that it can do, and one of them was like a Halloween dark ride, like boardwalk style, like oh, classic cool. thing that you go through. It was really cool. But there's different vendors that'll like sell different things like that. They had a sweet tooth ice cream truck that was a five minute escape room, and I was like, I want that shit. Wow, like that would the be sick. Metal sweet yeah, tooth thing. I was like, that's so cool. I know that would be it. Would be unreal to but just I was have. Like, I'm not driving that back from St. Louis. So why? I I don't. That know. That would be fun. I I just feel like I was I'd be too tired. Yeah, that would be an exhausting. I felt like ride. I needed a CDL for that thing. Would uh, so I mean, like, whenever you are like, you know, figuring out the mechanics and like trying to like, you know, make all this shit happen the way, you know, do do you think about how, how do I want to phrase it? Like, whenever you are going to these trade shows and you are like trying to utilize the space that you have, the time that you have, you know, like, do do you like like what's the average time for a person to go through the haunt? Um, I would say our walkthrough is anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes. It depends on how fast you're going and how fast the group in front of you is going and your own pacing. Some people want to like walk through every room so slow and take in all the scenery, which I love. I yeah. love the appreciate appreciation. And then there's other people that are just like scared Running, shitless, just yeah. barreling through the place. So it really depends on like how fast you're going, but I would say anywhere. Now, like like the mindset of like a, a haunted house that is, you know, trying to design things. What I was getting at before is like you have like, you know, if you're going through for, in 40 minutes and you have people going through, it's like, do you focus like on like, how do you, how do I want to describe it? Like, like, how do you focus on like where you utilize your resources? Like, obviously some animatronics are going to be like, you know, a big expensive thing that you're going to have to like invest in at one point. It's like in your mindset, do you guys figure out like how you could just, you know, stretch a dollar rather than like buy these like expensive animatronics? Like it's kind of both. You know what I mean? Yeah. We look at like, that was a bad way to ask. And no, I no, think. no, you're good. When we go to the trade show, we don't, like we have a, a plan, we have an idea, we know what we want to do, but we go there and you kind of have to wait to be inspired. Yeah. To see what people, what new things people have purchased or, I guess or are bringing to the show. That makes sense. So like, and there's always like that, like kid in a candy store vibe. I get that really bad. Yeah. Or like I'll walk in and I'll be like, I want that. Yeah. And like, what are you going to do with it? And I'm like, I don't fucking know yet, but I'm gonna make it work. I want that. It's cool. This year it was a, a guy in a bush. They didn't, I didn't get it. But it was like an animatronic that was a tree like this and his hands were in front of his face and then he just like popped forward. It was an animatronic? But it looked like a tree. Yeah. And I was oh, like, wow. that's cool as shit. That's going to drop people to the floor. Yeah. Um, but it sold before we could get it. So that, I mean, like these people have like, you know, just one or a couple of these things. Yeah. Them? You can order them, but with every haunted house is ordering them. It's, it's hard to, I guess so. Like, if you don't order it like immediately, you might not get it until the middle of August, but we open in the beginning of September. Yeah. So we don't want to have things come later, come late. And then we're like delaying some type of project huh. that that's interesting. Yeah. A lot of stuff to incorporate in this. What's yeah. like the hardest part about your job? Um, I think the balance in October is probably the hardest part. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's definitely like, I don't want to sound like, I'm complaining about it because I'm not. I don't think, I don't think, do you think people would think you're sounding like you're, I feel like whenever people say, whenever I ask people <laughs> these questions, like what's the hardest part of it, it is, I feel like that uh, some people often are immediately like, all right, I don't want to sound like I'm harping on it. But <laughs> as a listener, I feel like everyone has a reality that, you know, yeah. shit is chaotic. Oh, yeah. For what sure. is tough to do for you? I think it's just being able to, like balance both like my, my daily personal life and my haunted house life at yeah. the same time, because it can, everything condenses. So it's kind of like putting Mentos in a bottle of Coke and then opening the lid, opening the lid is my October. Yeah. The Mentos in the Coke is like July, September or July, August, September. And then we start shaking it. And so like having, finding the time to do all of the things that I want to do still is probably the hardest part, but I wouldn't change it. Yeah. At all. Because yeah. I, I do, I love what I do. I mean, all of my, all the people that I hang out with almost on a daily basis are all at the haunted house. We all, we're all doing it together. But this is like, by the time October hits, everybody's like, it's spooky season. And I'm like, 
I'm yeah. not been doing spooky season. You're like, I live it. Yeah, but it's fun. It, it is fun. How often are you guys like meeting throughout the year to like you know we do do haunted house business? There's kind of like always conversation happening about it. Like yeah. I would say, like once a week, like somebody's calling somebody, being like, "Hey, get this ready for in May and get this done and kind of stuff like that." But once May hits is usually like when we start getting more involved with each other and then we'll meet like every two weeks and then wow. kind of it's a uh it's a beast oh yeah it gotta be a beast to do it and make it run and make it run efficiently i mean like do you guys how many people you got going through there every night like our uh, property attendance is upwards of sixty thousand between september and october. ridiculous yeah but that's also why we want to have more shit for people to do when they're on property because like Last night alone, we had a guy that drove an hour and a half to be at the haunted house. And we, Did had, to he? Pause. we had to pause because the storm came through. Oh, shit. So, I didn't think about yeah, that. Safety wise, I mean, wow. we're not sending anybody in there if there's lightning, just like any other event that you go to. Was it pretty crazy where Ian's were yesterday? It was, it was like a quick pop. There was like an A frame sign that blew over, and yeah. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it was like this. It was tiny wild little, here like, for a minute. Yeah. It was real wild for a minute. I didn't know that they. I don't watch football, but I didn't know that they delayed the game apparently, for hours. I don't watch it either, yeah. but apparently they went until like 1 a.m. I right? know. I was like, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so Could not I mean, catch me dead doing that. Like the winter <laughs> stuff though, uh, I, or not winter, but like the weather stuff, I didn't think about that. You guys are open rain or shine. Yeah. We're open rain or shine unless there's like thunder and lightning. And then yeah. we're like, no, we're not doing this right now. Is that uh, we we'll usually pause, let the storm pass, get everybody like where they need to be. Is it then, a morale killer for rain? Um, for, for you guys, for us, for the workers, not always. I mean, coming off of a Saturday, like this past Saturday, we were insanely busy, which we're grateful for. And yeah. We love, I like a busier crowd. People are just more fun when it's busy. Yeah. So like, energy. Yeah. They're, they're excited. There's a lot of people that are excited there. So you're not in, especially if you're scaring people in the line while they're waiting, you're not scaring like the same person. Yeah for like an hour like did i get you yet they're like leave me alone and i'm like i'm bored but um so coming off of a saturday night like that where it's insanely busy and then having um a little bit of a little bit of a break and then, they, and then we were like hey we're pausing for rain and i like went into like the actors and i was like hey guys we're pausing enjoy this yeah this Hopefully it will never happen again this season, but <laughs> this is, this is the universe giving us a break. Yeah. But so it's nice. I mean, like, are you, were you ever someone whenever you were a scare actor that was just like one of the screamers all the time? Oh yeah. Like how do people do that with, and keep their voice? Um, Melissa Cross. What's that? The, uh, metal vocalist. No yeah, shit. She's the metal vocal coach. Oh so. yeah. Melissa Cross. Yeah. So we teach a little bit of that. Um, we do some diaphragm exercises to get people like they lay down on the floor. Like a lot of them when they're like doing their own warm ups. Wait, you guys are really doing all this? Yeah. Our warm ups, we do addiction warm up, we do a diaphragm warm up, we do a stretch, and then um every once in a while we'll do I'm a little teapot, but that's like if we got the time. What is addiction warm up? So we do like a tongue twister. So it's it's about unique speaking. New York, basically. Ow, now brown cow, yeah, stuff like that. So we have one, and it's it's takes about like a minute, minute and a half when you say it. And I tell them like, okay, you have to say this. I need to hear. I need you to enunciate. I need to hear every single syllable that you're saying and every single letter. So that way, like you're speaking very clearly because we'll get we have a section that's themed after London, and everybody in London. <laughs> Like a bad British accent will kill. You sound them. like you're from London. Yeah, exactly. And that's me. I cannot do, I can do like a, that is too funny. A haunted house British accent. But if I have to do like a believable, yeah, one, a bad accent like, would pull you out of it. Yeah. So I tell them, I'm like, if you can't do it, don't do it. That's it's fine. They'll funny. still get it. There's a phone booth there. They'll understand. Where so, they are. so you, that's so cool to think about. So that everyone reads that and like, you know, goes through everything. And then what's the next one? Diaphragm, so the diaphragm. So we, I teach them like how to breathe and project their voice properly and how to keep like the right amount of air and how to push it out of their, their body without hurting their vocal cords and where huh. that needs to come from. Because like I was acting on Saturday and like singing in the shower this morning and I was like, my voice is cracking and all this shit. And I'm like, damn, I need to take my own advice. <laughs> I did not warm up. Right. I mean, when did that come into play though? Like, like taking like that, 
you know, precaution and like actually like teaching that. My first year as a manager in 2019, we did opening night, Friday night, second night, Saturday, and Sunday we had a, we had our short show, but we still had a show to do. And I got so many messages from our cast that were like, I don't know if I can be in this spot tonight because I lost my voice. And I'm like, <laughs> Make you it can happen. rally. Like, yeah. This is what this is. You you clearly didn't do something right. And then I realized I was like, okay, I can't blame you for not knowing how to do it right. Yeah. So I just kind of studied a little bit more. That's interesting. Yeah. Such an interesting part of it. Wow. And how to scream and how to growl and all those different, like, I am a huge metal fan. So listening to all of that all the time and then coming across Melissa Cross's like vocal stuff, I was like, how... Can how you do you do that? this differently and how can this work for theater? And then come to find out she actually does teach it to like different uh, like acting groups and stuff like that too. Like she doesn't limit her vocal stuff just to music. music. It's, it's kind of all encompassing and to anything that's going to strain your voice and how to, how you can do it properly. Wow. Yeah. The more, you know, yeah, it's wild. That is wild. How often are you dressing up? Um, well, this weekend I'm going to be in costume probably every night. Um, we have a special be- special guest coming this weekend. I can't really tell you yet. I'll tell you when it's my cuts. Okay. Um, but uh, once they announce it, I'm going to be doing a little a little gig. For oh them. wow! Yeah, it's going to be fun. But I'll be in costume this weekend. But usually now that I'm managing the show. It's really hard for me to get in costume every single night. Yeah. Um, How long does it take you? Uh, like minutes flat. Really? Yeah. This Saturday. So I do it as a morale boost because I, I didn't get in costume at all this season. And I'm just like, you know, the the gavel walking around to the cast being like, do this, don't do that, do this. Blah, 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 and then telling them how to do their job. And then I turn the corner for our actor meeting in costume and they get hype as fuck. Yeah. They're like, oh shit. He's yeah. going to actually do it tonight. Like. Um, so I try and do that like once or twice and I have to wait for like everybody to kind of like find their footing and find their groove because like I have to, re- I respond to every single actor that needs something. So yeah. like I have five leads that will go through their in costume on radio that can report stuff and get to the actors a little bit faster than I can. Um, but if like they have to come out for like a medical reason or they have to come out for just any anything that's abnormal or like what we consider an emergency, they, I have to respond to that. Yeah. And I can't do that dressed as a clown. Huh? So I guess so. (laughs) Take all the effect out of there. I have had to like, this is very seldom knock on wood that we've ever had to deal with this, but like I had to, um, we've called ambulances and stuff to the property before just for like, just to keep our, we want to keep everybody as safe as possible. It's, we've been very fortunate, but I was in costume the one night. And like this, I'm like standing there, like ready to do like my like admin job. And this girl comes up and is like, can I get a picture with you? And I was like, uh, there's a fucking ambulance. <laughs> Just relax for five minutes. I'll be with you in a second. This crazy clown. And that's when I learned, I was like, I probably can't do these two things at the same time. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's it's good to have it for, you know, your uh, every once in a while. Like yeah. you said, a morale boost. Yeah. Uh, that's cool, though. That's cool. To, it got to be fun for you, right? Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun. Do you, are you, whenever you're dressed, are you in the haunt or are you outside? I'm typically outside. I try and go through the haunt as much as I can. Yeah. Um, and I told all the cast members this past weekend, I was like, hey, if I come into your room, let's hang. Like scare with me. I'll set you up. Like I'll cause a distraction. This will all work. Like, wow. I didn't even think about that. All you got little tricks and tools and everything. Oh yeah. It's all strategy. Wow. Yeah. Most people think like, like that you're, it's just like theater kids just popping out and screaming, but it is like, how do you instruct someone to like, you know, like, do you, you teach techniques on like what to do? Oh yeah. So we teach like how to move from point A to point B there's like unrecognizable patterns of movement. Like if you look at like, if you're, if an alligator is behind you, everybody kind of knows like running a zigzag, right? Cause the alligator Do people know that? Do, I thought. <laughs> I don't know. The more now you know. I know. Yeah, yeah, now I you know. You are ever getting chased <laughs> by an alligator. I think you're supposed to run in a zigzag. Okay. Um, but like that unrecognizable pattern of movement is what is going to be weird to you as an audience. Yeah. So like if I'm charging towards you, as a, and I want to be as threatening as possible, I'm going to juke and start moving around. So that way you're like, 
where are you going? Yeah. Distraction um, always on your toes. So we teach stuff like that. We teach, um, no more than three steps in one direction before you pivot to find a new target because we don't want anybody to feel like they're being chased because when they chase, they run, when they run, they hit a wall. Uh, I know how to run through that place, but nobody else does. Could you run through there pretty quick with their, you yeah, think, if I need to get yeah. through there fast, I can. Uh, is there like secret passageways to get to Everywhere. one end? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. The whole property is like a big circle, but you're walking in like a really elaborate, like shoelace kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so we can kind of like get from one side to the other really quickly. Deans have like a like a Home Alone Kevin McAllister map <laughs> on the wall of like no, where things are. We all know it by now. That would be sick. Yeah. That needs to be on we a have, t-shirt. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be a t- sick t-shirt. Yeah, right. Wow. You got to keep that in your pocket for next year. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it just it seems like a fun, you know, a fun gig. Like, like we said, whenever we started this talk off, it's like... I mean, to do this stuff, you're obviously, you know, ridiculously passionate about it. Oh, you have it's to. It's like, be. do you, is there really anyone that works there that is just like, yeah, I'm going to just, you know, I'm, I don't really care about Halloween or anything, but, I, you know, whatever. No, yeah, no. I didn't think like, so. Even like our customer service team, like they're all passionate about like the, the entertainment side of the project and like being a part of like the experience that's not scary. Yeah. Like it's everybody kind of is working the performance together. of it all. It's like yeah. working in a carnival. Like it yeah. feel that's the vibe. It's, it's carny sick. Shit for I sure. like it. Yeah, it's <laughs> carny. Yeah, we, just, we just go home. We don't live there. That's uh, who's the who's the biggest name you had in there? Um, like audience member wise. Yeah. Uh, we did the um concussion rap party. The what concussion? Oh, like Will Smith? Yeah, I got to scare the shit out of Will Smith. Really? It was was uh, is Margot Robbie in that? I no, don't know. maybe not. I might be wrong. Yeah. No, that was, was that filmed here. Yeah, didn't even know that. Yeah, I think it it took place like in Pittsburgh. So what's so they, what's like the what's the what's the day like whenever people know that like a big person is coming? So they didn't tell us who was coming that day until we were like in costume. So like ev- we knew like they like took all of our phones. It was like this whole thing. Um, but the production company rented out the property and like they, we like created like a tent system and they had like their whole big party, but they could walk through the haunted house as much as they wanted. Oh, wow. And I got to hear him rap the fresh prints. No um, way. Yeah. Cause I was in the opening room and they like paused. They were like, Hey, you guys are on a break. Wow. And so we were like all chilling up, up there. It was so cold that night and he was performing and I could hear it because it was like basically where the bar tents are and where the maze are to the front of the building where you walk in. That's where we were. And he was just going off doing the song. And I was like, (laughs) this is like once in a lifetime that I would ever, this is like a bonus for me. Uh, I mean, like the people, I mean, like whenever you know that you have someone in there or Ian's like, you you turn it on a little bit more. Oh yeah. So we do everything on a scale of one to 10 too. uh, for our prep. So I teach them like, if you're going to scream, scream at a one, now scream at a 10, figure out what that sounds like in between for two through nine. So that way, like if you're huh. in your, if you're in your spot, like if you're screaming at a 10 all night long yeah. from seven thirty to midnight, you got to allocate where you're going to put your efforts. Exactly. So you have to find balance and like scare at a 10, but you don't have to do 10 all the time. Yeah. Like if I'm walking in there, not getting scared, there's no reason for you to be wasting your tens on me and for real. Yeah. But also like the effort of a 10 needs to be like the pop scare yeah. part of it. But I teach it two, ten, five. So you started at two, that's your idle animation scare at a 10, reset your energy back down to a five. So that way you can carry on a conversation after you've scared somebody. Not be like out of breath and not be. Yeah. And then when the next group walks in off right on their feet, be ready to you're have not it. already screaming at a 10 for five minutes straight. Wow. Yeah. How crazy is it to like, think of that yeah. as you know, like I feel like, you know, anyone that comes in here, chef, anything like that, people will go eat the food, leave. That was great. Everything was great. Tasted great. But no one really thinks about how the fuck it's done. Right. And it's like people come to the haunt. They go through the haunt. That was scary, fun, Halloween time. But no one thinks about the mechanics. Right. No one thinks about Melissa Cross lessons <laughs> get, getting taught in the background, how the makeup's done, how you allocate your time to make sure it's efficient. And uh, I mean, it's pretty fascinating. Yeah. It's uh, pretty fascinating. So so what are when is it till this year? So we close this year on November 2nd. That's going to be our, I believe, I don't know if it's been advertised, but I'm pretty sure it's our Lights Out event. Um, But we're going to run 
Thursday through Sunday for the month of October and then the week of Halloween. I think it starts the 24th to the 2nd. We're open every single day. Every so day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as well. Holy it's shit. It's like a Thursday to the following Saturday. Do you cut hair in the day still? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You don't take no time off for Halloween? I balance out some of the time. Like I'll yeah. take like one, like the 24th I'm taking off because I'm like, I just want to make the start of that stretch yeah. just Haunted House Day. Um, so I'll take off that Thursday morning, but... Yeah. You just like live and breathe it, huh? Yeah. Just kind of go back and forth. What do you do whenever you're not like working at both of your jobs? I'm playing Fortnite. Yeah. I, really? I swear to God. A Fortnite player. Yeah, that shit is so fun. I've never played so it in stupid. my life. It's so stupid. Is it for Xbox? You play for Xbox? PlayStation. PlayStation. Yeah. Or do you play a lot of other video games? Oh, yeah. I I The Last of Us, all of the I've, Dark I have played stuff. that. That's the only game I've ever played from beginning to end uh, compl- to its entirety. Yeah, I like I, I I do a lot of video games, a lot of horror games. That's kind of where like I pick up some stuff too, and be like, "Ooh, that's weird." I'm gonna take a picture of that. Yeah, and then I'll do a makeup or something because of that. Or, um, you else? watch a lot of horror? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a huge movie buff, um, but I like am like the type where like I will remember the actors, but never the details of the movie. Yeah. That's Which good. Is, that's all yeah. right. I like it. I'm like, oh, they were cool. What else are they in? And yeah. then I'll go through. Like a lot of TV, um, but nothing like, I kind of feel like I am always, like we close the season and I'm waiting for the next one to start. So yeah, I just kind of like fill in the gaps. I feel like you really don't get that, that yeah. much downtime really because you start preparing pretty early in the year. Yeah. I mean, how often are you doing like, you know, are you doing a lot of like makeup just on the side now, like practicing makeup? So yeah, like I, I, I'm i always kind of trying to do something. Yeah. Um, usually right at the end of the season, I'm like, mm, I don't want to look at that yet. Yeah. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm going to take a break. But um, usually for like the trade shows this year. Um, Is that where you did the 80s look with that? Yeah, trick? that was a, I was featured at um, European Body Arts booth this year. They're like one of the biggest like special effects makeup companies. Um, they do like a lot of, they're based out of California and they do a lot of makeup for every film like that you've probably ever seen where somebody's looks different. They're using their products and they show at, they have booths at these trade shows. So I got to talking with them at the one in March, the big one. And they were going to do, there was a new show this year in Philly for haunted houses. So they were going to be there and I just reached out to them and I was like, if you need somebody to, you know, do a demo for you or anything like that, I know you guys are going to be there. I'll be there as well. So let me know. And they were like, sure. Wow. And I was like, oh. How long did that take? That, the prep for it was about like, um, I would say like a week's worth of prep to do like costume and the wig and all the stuff. And then the actual application I did, um, I started at 10 and I was done by like three. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty serious. Yeah, it was a lot, but it was a lot of prosthetics too. Yeah, which I mean, I'd I, never done before. Yeah, I literally like for people that are listening. I mean, you could see the images. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post it. They'll pop up all nice right here. <laughs> you know, people will see the the nice picture right there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's cool too. Uh, I because like I can't even conceptualize like how quick or like how much time it takes to do that stuff. I just know it takes forever. Like you'll see people in, you know, if they're in, you know, uh, doing films, people were in like the chairs for, you know, 18 hours, you know, the Grinch yeah. makeup, it's like 18 hours. Yeah. Uh, it's wild stuff. Now, uh, what are your goals as a, as a, uh, makeup artist, as a salon owner? Like what are your goals as, a, as, as someone living? I think I just want to like, I want to grow into different projects that, kind of push me to challenge myself a little bit more. So whether it's film, whether it's, you know, other haunted house work, whether it's making prosthetics, it just, I just kind of want to like start to explore what the rest of the avenues are for that. Yeah. Relative to haunted houses too. Um, and just kind of see, have you got to work in out. film? No. I mean, I've done like a couple, um, like indie independent things or student films and stuff. Um, but once I, when, I started actually getting a couple of film gigs right after beauty school. So it was like, start at the salon and do all the stability stuff and like assist and get all of that stuff going. And then here's a bunch of films. And then the, that was when the outsiders was filming here Mm. and I got offered a costume gig with them for it. That was like a two week period. And I was like, the outsiders, like the, the show, like the show, show. the scary one. No, wait, no, this was the one that was like post-apocalyptic. The outsider. 
The Outsiders? Outsiders? Uh, was that a Stephen King one? No, I don't know. I don't know either. It was on like WB or something oh, like that. Oh, then no. Or we're like not talking CW about the same thing. Shit. Oh, yeah. We're not talking yeah. about the same thing. It was really good from what I heard, but like I could have went that direction, but I was just starting at the salon, so it was a lot harder to play that game of like, okay, like do yeah, you, which, which route do you, you gig take? or do you like find that regular regular job? And now that I've, I'm have i working for myself, it's I can balance that a little bit differently. And Do you love one over the other more i don't think so yeah. i wouldn't be doing hair if it wasn't for the haunted house yeah um because i started working with wigs more and i always knew i wanted to go into that direction but i was just kind of like focusing on like the fun monster shit but now that like i've done that like that's it's such a different and i talked to antoinette about it of like you're making I'm, i get to make people feel good and then i get to make people feel terrifying yeah and playing both sides of that coin is really fun because a lot of that stuff can cross reference to each other. Yeah. So like there was a one time somebody had like a gnarly bruise and they were going to a wedding and I knew how to cover it just because that's awesome. Like I knew how to make it disappear in an extreme way because of what I've done at the haunted house. And then, wow, that's and cool. Vice versa. Yeah, that is, that's cool. And I guess I never thought about that. Yeah. Just tools in the toolbox. Yeah. That's uh yeah that's cool. I mean, so uh you're you're just every day at the haunt now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for the most part. Um okay. Yeah, that's cool. Well, uh I mean I feel like I feel I, I almost feel bad that we didn't talk more about you working <laughs> in the salon and like, oh, no, you know, you're cool. your your you know, your your technically in air quotes your real job yeah. you know i feel like we just like left that left that and pushed that to the side I and talk hair. about your haunt. yeah, yeah the, I cool, the cool shit is that the haunted house well, well we'll touch on that for sure but before we before we end everything we got the desert island questions now we did this five years ago but we got to do it again okay uh okay desert island questions whenever i give each guest three categories to take with them on a desert island and use until they starve to death and die first category three movies to take on a desert island beetlejuice for sure yeah it's been my whole personality for my whole life did you like the second one i haven't seen it yet oh wow because it's haunted house season so uh, like i've I not been able to get out but i loved it yeah it was I've good heard, i've heard it's great it was good I've heard i mean great. it could have been terrible yeah, but it was, you know, <laughs> for what it is, it's great. I'm I'm super excited for when I get the chance. I'll probably go on like a Sunday or something before we open. Oh, I yeah. might hit up on like a Tuesday when it's just going to be me in that theater. Yeah, that's, that's what I love great. it. Um, Autopsy of Jane Doe, I think, is one of the most underrated horror movies I've ever seen. Emil Hirsch. Yeah, fantastic. It's beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful. fantastic It's like four movie. people in the whole movie. I put Little it on because I thought it was going to be bullshit. I yeah. was like, oh, I need like an Eaton show. 100%. Someone was like put this on it's so good and i was like that literally looks like a fake ass movie that i'm right. never gonna watch right it is so one of those good. bottom of the rack walmart movies oh yeah, yeah. um <laughs> that's what it is a bottom of the rack walmart movie. that's what it looks $5 like five dollar bin yeah yeah and then i put it on and i was like this is ridiculously good it's one of the most creative movies i've ever seen um and then i think mean girls fuck yeah i she have doesn't to, even go here yeah uh have you ever seen haunt Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's the Eli Roth one, right? Yeah, he's yeah. like he's affiliated with some way, but like that's a sick one. Yeah. Sick haunt. Uh, that, that's another like bottom of the shelf five dollar bin movie that we yeah. like were about to put on just to eat dinner, and it turns out to be like one of my favorites. Have you seen Houses October Built? Yes, that, that's another. That was movie. cool. I like that. I I. I like that too, but that was like a, it gave me like a weird vibe. You right. know, haunt was a different type of feel. Yeah. It's like houses of October. It was, they were like two different things, but that was a creepy one. I forgot that, that trick with like that doll head. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. I, uh, that's like still one of the scariest things to think about in a haunted house is like, people say that all the time. I mean, really, you gotta yeah. be real about it and you oh, gotta yeah. think about it. It's like, you know, it's kind of fucked up because you, what do you, you wouldn't know. Yeah. It's like the Scream movie in the beginning of the Scream 2 whenever he's killing her in the movie theater and people are like, fuck Yay! yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're clapping. They're all yeah. clapping. And they're like, that might be real. Yeah, uh, I mean, fortunately, like for us, like I know every single person that's on property. Yeah. Like in some way, like, and I'll like crack jokes. I'll be like, who are you again? Yeah. But like, if, as far as like the cast members go, like oh, if somebody sure. walks yeah. back and I don't know them, I'm like, where, where are you supposed to? Like they, that's, they've always, always worked there yeah 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I didn't even bring it's it up crazy. as that, but that's yeah, no, it's wild but, to think about. As a person that walks through, like we're about to go to that. Me, though. Uh, we're about to go to that one in Ohio this weekend. The factory of factory of terror. Factory of terror. Oh, yeah, and it's like could be scary. You yeah, know, it could be someone <laughs> crazy up in there. The drive is scary. Yeah, yeah. I went up there a couple of years ago for their Christmas show, and my GPS took me like the back roads. I have to look there. that up and make sure I go the right way. It was wild. It was like dirt road city. And I was like in my like little Chevy spark. <laughs> I was like, that's Jesus, good. It's committed. Go. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, second category, did you give me, yeah, you gave me three movies yeah. now. Second category. Do you read it all? Um, I can. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a favorite book? So I think the, one of my favorite books is perks of being wallflower. I read that like when I was the same age as the main character. Oh, yeah. So that was like, that it's was the a best. really fun one. Um, fun one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, it was a really fun one. Yeah, I mean, it was fun to read like at that time. Yeah, you feel like you're. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a fun, fun story. But. What a, what a great book though. Yeah, the movie was great too. Yep. And then um, I just started reading one called Come Closer. That was recommended to me by a friend, and the book is rec- is like supposed to be cursed. The guy at Barnes and Noble told me that, and I was literally like, "Wow, please stop." Yeah, I don't need to know all that. Yeah, but it's <laughs> the first page of the book is a like checklist of like, did have you experienced this? Have you experienced this? Okay, if you've scored a three or higher, it's likely that you're possessed. Please seek um, spiritual counsel. I'll stick and away so from that one. Then you like as you go through the book, it um it tells this story of this woman's possessed. It's a really short read, but I've picked it up a couple of times. But once the haunted house kicked in, I was like, oh, I'll reread that when i get a chance what scares you like what kind of stuff scares you um possession that's one that like anything that involves like paranormal demons, activity yeah like well ghosts i'm not really scared of ghosts until ghost shit happens yeah and i'm like i'm out of here yeah i'm the f- i'm you you'll never see me run faster paranormal activity whenever i watched that was a terrifying movie like, yeah that, that that stuff scares me ghost stuff is definitely freaky you ever have ghost stuff happen to you a couple times i've, I've had some spooky shit like what's the me. spookiest shit that happened to you oh um we were building at the haunted house one night uh, and happened at the haunt. Yeah. And like, I don't really know like how that type of energy is created. Like I would love to sit down with somebody and figure that out. But, um, I heard, I, spe- I heard boot steps like in gravel and I like turned the corner and there were only three of us that were there that night. And two of us were in the room. One of them we had sent out to like grab water or something like that. And I thought it was him coming back. And I, I heard the boot steps turn my peek my head out the door and there was nobody standing there. And I was like, we're done. Yeah. Grab your shit. Yeah. That's creepy. We're locking it down for the night. Yeah. That's um, creepy. Yeah. Just some different. That's that's. I mean, that's creepy enough for sure. Yeah. Creepy enough for me. Uh, all right. Three, uh, CDs. Ah, <sighs> oh, shit. Okay. Color decay by the devil wears Prada. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, I've never heard another song. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, what else? I know right now I'm feeling the pressure. <laughs> the, I really, I recently got it. I can't name any other albums, but health there's, uh, it's this band called health that I just kind of got turned on to. They're really good. So any of their, their albums I will take with me. And then probably, soundtrack to jesus christ superstar oh jesus christ superstar yeah. he does that in the movie <laughs> not too many people know about jesus christ superstar yeah. why do you know about that uh that was the first musical i ever did no uh, when i was way. in high school that was our show and uh what a choice yeah for a, it was for wild. a high school play and i was like 14 <laughs> ripping these songs it was fun um Hilarious. but that soundtrack it's just every song is just so bubbly different and, and so like fun. up and yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good one uh okay uh third to last question is the death row meal so uh death row meal you get put to death you get one meal before you get put to death what is it an appetizer a main course and a dessert you get to pick 
22 ounce porterhouse from Texas Roadhouse. Love a Texas Roadhouse. Oh, it's my favorite restaurant. We ever. go all the time. We all got to go. Yeah, I would love. We to. go to Texas that's Roadhouse the, all the time. That's the best place. It really is. Honestly, the most affordable and the best quality meal that you'll get that out of a chain. Oh yeah, yeah. Even better than Longhorn. Even better than you know, it's um, light lights out over Red Lobster. Oh, I don't even know why that place is around anymore. <laughs> Me and Antoinette went Those to Red biscuits, Lobster. That's it. it ain't even good no more. They're all really? like dusty now. Now, dusty old biscuits we went to one like a year and a half ago and it was like 120 dollars. it was some nasty ass shit at red lobster and i was like we're never here again yeah. and then then we walked we just drove by the one in robinson and there's a sign that just says we're open real big and it's like they're begging for people to come oh, yeah. in there uh texas roadhouse this yeah. shit oh yeah i there was a period between probably 2020 to 2022 to early 2023 where i was there every saturday yeah the one in west mifflin yeah my business partner went in there and they were like don't you work with spencer and she was like are you kidding me right now we let we hit up we hit it up uh for a while we were going every week and then we were like we gotta chill for a minute. Uh, yeah every once in a while i'm like i gotta take it it's break. honestly not bad for me and antoinette to get in out of there with a 20 percent tip it's like 64 dollars. really not bad you can't beat it's that great. if you go to giant eagle you ain't even getting that for that much money no. yeah that's good okay appetizer um from texas roadhouse no just, oh, just in general. any app tea sticks okay yeah that's yeah. that that has been one of the most picked uh, you would be surprised but as an They're appetizer good any restaurant you go to i know i've you never really had a bad cheese it. stick unless i made it from like a freezer bag dude. yeah those ones suck. that's a good point uh all right uh dessert Ooh, cheesecake yeah yeah any type of cheesecake that's a big picked one too that's picked yeah. a good bit here on here t- as well that's interesting. I just don't feel like I've had bad cheesecake either. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I feel like I could. I Antoinette just, just got an email from Cheesecake Factory because her birthday is on I the 17th. I found a gift card in my house. Uh, One of those lost shit. gift cards that just turn up. Hell yeah. yeah and it was a Cheesecake Factory. Someone one. just offered me, uh, so one of my buddies was like, you want to go to Top Golf?" And I looked in this drawer, Antoinette's mother, I golfed, <laughs> I told her I golfed, you know, a couple times and for like three years, she just bought me Top Golf gift cards. Yeah. Never went. I just never went. So I had like $300 in Top Golf gift cards which is like at least two but two hours we just i was like you know it's on me tonight <laughs> yeah. so i'm just ball out here because we, yeah, we don't ever go but uh yeah lost gift card that's yeah. the best top all right golf's fun it, yeah i mean it's all right. are you a golfer i'm a top golfer and top, like a mini golfer yeah if i get the chance but i did top golf once and then there's that twist yeah. move that you do yeah I woke up the next day sore, sore. I was like, I'm over 30. Yeah. My back sore. And I went I out. I'm dead. I know. This it sucks. Is it. Over 30. You start getting sore for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, the second to last or the yeah second to last question. I'm curious. What's the best concert you've ever been to? I've been um, asking people that recently. Probably the zombie two tour of 20. What was that? 2022. It was the Devil Wears Prada. 2022. Headliner. Yeah. Huh. That sounds good. Where'd you see it? It was at Mr. Small's. And then I actually caught the show in Boston as well that year, that same week. Oh, yeah. Devil Wears Prada. Yep. I'm trying to get Giuseppe on here. He's coming on here soon. He's yeah. a drummer. Giuseppe, if you're listening, you better get on this damn show. Yeah. He's, uh, it'll, we'll make it happen. He's fucking all He's over. busy. Australia, He's wherever. Yeah. Australia, wherever. Uh, now, last question. Uh, you get a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? Wait, that's not the last question. Last question, you're getting ready to go to the haunt. Uh, it's ramping up, big weekend. You go to a gas station and get a snack. What is it? Um, recently, it's been those Reese's Animal Crackers. Never yeah. had them. So they're animal crackers that are like peanut butter dipped, covered in chocolate. My goodness. Yeah, they're bomb. Never they're had good. those. Either that or Bugles. Bugles. Just original bugles. Antoinette's a bugle. Antoinette's yeah. a bugle eater. <laughs> Dude, you they're know? so good. You're and you, you and her are like, the only ones I've ever met that just eat bugles. They're still. good. And my grandfather that passed away in 06. <laughs> uh now if you like like do you guys have like a like a little like a little foraging area in the back and everything? Like is it like a do you guys got like candy and shit back there at the hall? Yeah, haunt? well we tell everybody to bring their own stuff. Okay. I encourage them because like there's so many people that have to have this and can't have that. And yeah. Stuff. I guess so that makes sense. We supply like a, like water and everything for them, but um I tell them to bring something that's can sustain them throughout the evening. So most people will do like beef jerky, but I'm like, be careful with that because that shit stink in yeah. your spot. Yeah. So 
So I got woken up on body. a flight once because of somebody <laughs> eating beef jerky next to me, and I never will forget it. But um, <laughs> at least it wasn't like an egg sandwich. I would have preferred that. It yeah. was like I was on my way to Halloween Horror Nights. It was like a early, like seven a.m. flight to Orlando. Uh, and you're like, it just stinks. So it's like eight forty-five in the morning, and this dude's just like <laughs> chomping beef jerky, and it was like a big bag too. Hell yeah, you gotta get that protein in. Yeah, I was like, all right, uh, but um. I, a lot of them will bring like sour patch kids because they're better for your throat um oh wow the more yeah. you know huh yeah why is that i heard once that that's what they do on broadway uh so like they'll keep them back there so that way like when they come off stage they can be like probably like, makes a refresh probably has you it generates Lubricates. more saliva yeah. ah holy shit never thought about that yep. so the actors are munching away while we're once we pass oh, yeah they pop out and they're like <laughs> and then they like shut the door and then they're like <laughs> that's the best uh okay uh yeah last question now if you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead who would it be and why huh probably my grandmother yeah yeah if it wasn't a loved one oh though. not a loved one okay um dick smith who's that he was the godfather of special effects that'd probably be like one that i would want to talk is to. that like who rick baker looks up to it's yeah probably one okay of them. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I knew. What did he, like, what was he? Exorcist. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah I'm hip to it. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, that's a good answer. Is he still alive? I don't think so. I'm 90. I'm like, what if I, what if he's not? And I'm going to look like an idiot. <laughs> if he's not That'll dead? Be so, no, I'm pretty sure he's dead. What's it, Dick Smith? I'm going to look him up. Yeah, he died in 2014. Okay. I like, I'm pretty sure. R. I can't R. remember who I said last time. I don't remember either. I, uh, I I was thinking, I was like, I might, because uh, we're about to go to the Castle Blood, we're about to go on the Castle Blood trip on Friday, so I was like, I'm going to listen back to the Ricky Eight Dick episodes and like listen to what he said with all this stuff so I can kind of like give people little info on the on yeah. the tour there, but I wasn't listening to yours, but I was like, I, I'm going to just do a completely, right. like uh, just a fresh episode. Fuck it, we'll do it live. Yeah, because you, you guys weren't, even, I, I read the post and I was like, 100 Acres is not open this year, and I was like, what a... I, I, it's like weird to even think that that was a point in life, right? You know, a half a decade ago almost. Uh, but yeah, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I appreciate you coming over and talking to me Hell in this yeah, like man. busy year you yeah. have or this busy time of the year. Uh, but take a second, tell everyone where they could like follow your makeup page, uh, see your salon, and uh, obviously follow the Hundred Acres page. So Instagram, I can be found at um, Spence X Scare. Um, and then my hair page is Spence X hair. <laughs> I never put it together. Kind of goes together. <laughs> it used to be Spencer scares. And then somebody was like, why don't you just do the same thing? And I was like, yeah, whatever. That's good. That's, That's a good answer. Yeah. Good, good friend. But, um, and then hundred acres manor on all social to find out more about that. And the salon's called chariot and vine. Hey, yeah. Get your hair done. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> I appreciate it. I really do. I, uh, Thank you. I appreciate all you guys did for us, uh, coming to Anytime. the manor. It was a great time. Everyone loved it. Uh, genuinely had a great time. And, uh, I mean, if you guys have not been there yet, I mean, you got to get out there. So, uh, open till November 2nd again. Yep. Open till November 2nd. We close it when it gets dark or we open when it gets dark and then we'll close on school nights at 10 and weekends. Uh, ticket booth closes at 1130. Oh yeah. But we'll let the line go in. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Everyone else that's listening, appreciate you as usual. Each and every week, we're back with another great guest doing great things in the city. Thank you for listening. Call you right back. <laughs>